Hello, my name is Ram and welcome to another video of Matuklasan. And here, I'm gonna show you how to visualize data using bar chart, pie chart, Pareto chart, and side-by-side -side chart using Microsoft Excel. Let's start right away with the bar chart. So for our bar chart, we will use this example. Maan conducted a survey and asked the respondents about how they pay their monthly bills. And we need to construct a bar chart using this frequency distribution below. Notice that we have the frequency and percentage column, but if you're planning to construct a bar chart, you can choose between the two, pending frequency or percentage. And to start, all you need to do is to select the first two columns, the column for the variable and the column for the frequency. And you need to go to insert ribbon and go to this function, insert column or bar chart. So we have different options to show our bar chart. You can use the 2D column, the 3D column, the 2D bar, and the 3D bar. Our bar rather. So how about we start with the 2D bar? Okay, so here the default title is frequency because we happen to select the frequency column here. But if you want to change the parts of these graphs, you can always do that by selecting the graph and then going to the design ribbon. So here in the design ribbon, you can see here that you have different options of showing your bar chart. So if you happen to like a black background, you can select this one. But for a more detailed graph, you can go to Quick Layout and you can add any element that you like in the graph. In my case, I always choose this kind of layout for me to show the name for each axis or the title for each axis and the label for each shaded bar. And for us to change the title, you can always select this title area twice. And how about we name this, how adults pay their monthly bills. Okay, so if you want to specify the title of the axis, you can left-click the, the mouse twice again. And let's change this one to frequency because it's the axis for the frequency. And this one is what? For the form of payment. Form of payment. But if you want to customize your elements, you can always go to the add chart element instead of using the quick layout. So for example, you want to include the data labels like the frequency inside the bars. You can always do that by selecting this add chart element. So let's say we choose this and we place the frequency here in the middle of the bars. So if you like to format or another format option, you can always go here and select this for your background. And if you want to change the bar, the colors of the bars, you can go here in the design ribbon and change color scheme. Now, what if you decided to change your horizontal bars into vertical bars by changing the bar type? So, we need to go here in the change chart type and select column. And here, you can see that you can select vertical bars like this one. So, selecting this will change your graph right away. Remember that it is recommended to use the frequency whenever we are trying to construct a bar chart. But if you really want the percentage to be shown on your bar chart, it's also possible here. So let's try selecting this column for the form of payment and this percentage column. Go to insert. And how about I use recommended charts this time so that I could right away see this bar chart. Selecting OK. And... Here's our new bar chart. But remember to put labels on your axis, okay? So in this case, we are using percentage to represent our data. So you need to label this percentage because it is assumed to be frequency if you did not write anything here on the left or on the y axis. 
But for us to properly visualize percentage, we need to use pie chart. Okay, so same. We just need to select this column and then this percentage. You go to insert. You can always go to the recommended charts and you can see the pie chart here. But if you want the specific icon for the or function for the pie chart, you can select this icon, the insert pie or sometimes called donut chart. Okay, so here you have another option like 2D, 3D pie, and donut. Now, how about we just select 3D this time? Okay, and there's your pie chart. How about I select different option and putting some layout. Okay, you can see here that it's best to show this using labels of percentage. Now, how about the Pareto chart? Here's our example. Miss China, a bank manager, consolidated all concerns relating to incomplete automated teller machine transactions. Now, data concerning the causes of incomplete ATM transactions were collected and shown in the table below. We all know that the best type of graph that we could use here is the Pareto chart because we are trying to identify specific problem that needs to be addressed right away. So if you want a detailed discussion about the Pareto chart, you can check my playlist, my statistics playlist, specifically visualizing data. Now, we all know that we need uh, to arrange the frequency in descending order because that's one of the uh, things that we need to remember whenever we try to construct a Pareto chart. Now, here... It's already arranged in ascending order, but if it's not, you can always select this sort and filter function of Excel to rearrange this in descending order. We also need cumulative percentage whenever we construct a Pareto chart manually, but here in Microsoft Excel, we can actually show right away the cumulative percentage by just using the variable column and the frequency column. So let's begin constructing one by selecting these two columns for the variable and frequency. Go to insert, recommended charts, and here you can see the bar chart with a line graph, which is the Pareto chart. So selecting this will give us this chart. Well, it's still not right because as you can see here, well, good thing I've included the cumulative percentage column here. As you can see here, the cumulative percentage is 48.84, so it should start here. Well, that's correct in this part, in the percentage part. But looking at the frequency, we can see that the 48.84 should correspond to the 379 frequency. But here, the frequency is, I think it's below 200, and this starting uh, point of the line should be here, right? The reason is that the axis has a total of 400 or the highest um, value here is just 400, which should be 776 because 100% should correspond to 776, which is the total frequency of this example. And for us to change the maximum value for this axis, all we need to do is to select this axis, right click, and then format axis. So here, you can see here that the maximum automatic or default value is 400 because it's the highest in the data set. But we need to change this to 776 because that's the total for the frequency. So by changing it, will give us this chart. Notice that our Pareto chart is now correct because like the 48.84% here, corresponds to 379 of the frequency here in the graph. All we need to do now is to format this chart by using the design and format ribbon. How about we try this one? Yep, how about this one? Yep, kahit ano. Now, notice here that the vital view is this one because we have 379 and 285. So, for Miss China, the manager of the bank, she has to prioritize these concerns. If you don't have a recommended chart function in your insert ribbon, you can always select the 
histogram for you to be able to construct a similar graph like this. Now, let's proceed with the side-by-side -side chart. This is the example that we used in the previous video in the construction of frequency distributions. 80 students were asked about their preferred distance learning modality this coming school year and their responses are shown in the table below. So SLM for self-learning modules, OBL for online-based learning, and uh, television radio-based learning. Now, here you can see that we have two categorical variables. So if you want to compare two categorical variables in one chart or graph, we may use the side-by-side -side chart. Now, uh, the first um, variable which is gender has two data, we have female and male, while for the preferred learning module, we have three responses or possible responses. Now, looking at this table, we can see that the frequency were already distributed. So we have here the frequency of preferred learning module by gender. So what if I need to compare these two graphs by using side-by-side -side chart? So what I did is I just separated this part. Galing din dito sa left side. I just separated it here so that I could uh, include the long title for the chart okay so it's the same as this one so all you need to do is to get this part now selecting this cells going to insert you can go to the recommended charts and here you can see different kinds of bar charts that we could use for our side-by-side -side chart okay so let's try selecting this one and we have now our side-by-side -side chart again the usual formatting option Quick layout, I think it's important to use the quick layout here to show different kinds of elements that we need for the graph. And how about we name this chart Wait, it can't copy. Preferred learning module by gender because we are comparing two variables, right? So here in the graph we can see that the frequency for female is 14 for the television radio based learning and 25 for the male now, right here we can see the 25 male students prefer the self-learning module over just 14 female students now if you want the side-by-side -side comparison of the percentage this time we're going to use this table for the percentage and i just uh, copy pasted the whole thing the whole table here so that I can change the um, The acronyms for this okay para yung table natin completo yung information now what we need to do is to select this columns and rows or these cells and then we need to go to insert again and if ever you don't have a recommended chart option on your Microsoft Excel, you can always select this. And then you need to go to more column charts for more options. So here you can see that we have a side-by-side -side bar chart here. So it's up to you what if I'm going to um, cat categorize them according to their preferred self-learning self module. So I'm going to select this one. Then select OK. And notice that we don't have a gap here because it's possible for us to have a side-by-side side-by-side uh, side chart without the gaps because it's a frequency, right, or a separate percentage. So if you want uh, to form or to construct a chart without gap, you can always select any of these um, bars, then right-click, go to Format Data Series, and make the series overlap to zero. So changing this to zero will remove the gap between the bars. Notice that I also type the percentage here so that the um, y-axis here will have percentage even without the label for it to be clear that it's a side-by-side -side chart of a percentage distribution. Now, if you want to know how I transform this raw data into these kinds of uh, distribution tables, you can always check my data analysis in Excel playlist, which is posted below.
And that's all for this video. If you want to learn more about charts in Microsoft Excel, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. See you in the next video.